Hey there, Postal here. So today we are going to be looking at the Tier 9 Soviet fighter, the Lavochkin 160. Let's go. Okay, so what is this plane? Well, it's a very unique plane actually in the game, believe it or not. It might not necessarily look like it. Uh, but it is the only tier 9 um, Soviet plane with 30s. Uh, yeah. Prove me wrong. You can't. Um, so, you know, these planes, uh, the light fighters with two 30s is not unique to the game, but it is for Soviet planes. The Ki-162, for instance, has two of them. Um, at tier 10, the attacker has two of them. Um, so, again, it's not unique for the game, but it's unique for this country. Um, and the, the guns themselves are a little bit unique. They actually have slightly longer range than the Japanese guns, and they actually hit harder than the Japanese guns. The, uh, they do 300 damage um, each per second. So, um, pretty darn strong for Tier 9, right? Uh, and with that, you've got a lot of flexibility to uh, to this plane. You can do things uh, that you won't be able to necessarily do in a plane that might have 20s. Um, you can take down ground pounders pretty easily as long as you're you know, making sure that it's not uh, beating you up. You can also take down bombers as long as they're uh, you know, down within your range. Of course, like all the Lavochkins, the altitude performance isn't the best, but this plane keeps a lot of its energy. It's able to maintain a pretty high uh, airspeed even when it's in the yellow for altitude. And because of that, you can get up a little bit higher than, than uh, people would expect you to be, and you can still be viable. I've set this plane up for um, on my consumables, the pneumatic control assist, and the engine cooling. Really, this is going to be my basic setup going forward for most of my planes. I'm always going to have first aid kit, and most of the time going to have engine cooling. Speed is really important, and when you need it, you need it. The pneumatic control assist, I'm kind of testing out. Um, I've, I think I actually use it on this game a couple times when I'm in the yellow just to make sure I can s maintain my maneuverability. I'm also testing out a G-suit and we'll see if I, I hang on to this or not. I don't know exactly when the G-suit kicks in, so that's a little frustrating. Um, but this plane does maintain its high speed pretty well, and so I'm testing out the G-suit on it. With a, a plane that has 230s, um, you know, it could be, it's tempting to put sight on there because sometimes, you know, the accuracy is what it is. Otherwise, I've set it up for maneuverability, and that's why you see my maneuverability is a little bit higher than it normally would be. Um, and that's because I, I just want this plane to kind of own, um, you know, own that niche of being maneuverable, and it does that very well. Um, so the game that we're that I've posted today isn't the my best personal point game at all in this plane. In fact, if you watched my stream, my first game I played on on a Saturday, I had a 16,000 point game. Really, really solid game. And I've had a lot of solid games in this plane since. Um, but I'm, you know, I don't think that the games that I recorded earlier today were... It didn't show all the things this plane can do. They might have been 14,000 or 12,000 personal point games, but you know, they were... There were I, I was forced into a corner where I had to stay in one sector, and I owned that sector, and yeah, we won the game, and yeah, I got 14,000 personal points, but uh, everybody knows how to sit and pivot and shoot down planes, right? The game I'm posting today, I don't even think it's a 10,000 personal point game, but it's it's got a Nakamatsu, you've got your McCampbell even. So in this particular game, I was able to do a little bit of everything and show off um, you know, all the good traits of an LA-160 and all the different things you can do with this plane when you want to do it. Um, so I hope you don't mind that. <laughs> um, if you do mind it, well, uh, nothing I can do about it. I've already obviously posted it. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy the gameplay. Uh, let's roll right into it and I'll see you on the other side. Go with the LA-160. We've got a Tier 9 battle, a ground pounder on the enemy team. Don't really like this map. Um, a P-51H as a human. And we've got a Ki-94, which is going to probably... It was actually going to be able to outmaneuver us, I believe. So let's go ahead and go from there. We have a I-260 on our team. 
And it looks like we're going to be going to the comm center. Go ahead and flip this bad boy. Can what I like about the LA160 is it actually keeps its speed pretty well. Um, you know, it feels like it, and I guess I'd probably have to do like a game by game comparison, but it feels like it does that better than some of the other tier 9s. Um, this is not the optimum range that I would want a plane to be at. I really want them to be about 1500 to 2000 feet away when I'm shooting at them, because your 30s are more consistent at that range. Too close, and it looks like they're going like straight through them. You know, if, I, uh, these 30s feel like they're torpedoes, right? Like they don't arm <laughs> until like a thousand feet. Um, and because of that, like sometimes you, you feel like your bullets are just going straight through a freaking plane. Um, 262 HG2, lightning outside. So, you know, super smart of Postal here to be playing while there's a thunderstorm going on outside. Can't keep up with this guy, but that is what it is. Um, let's head on down a little bit. I like to be around 6,500, maybe 7,000 feet. And here, oh, you weren't going for me. That's okay. Um, let's go ahead and go towards the multi-roll that's over here. It's probably up a little bit higher than he should be. Whatever multi roll it is. We got the Su 9. Oh, Su 9 is a Su freaking 9. And we don't need to head on a Su 9. So let's go ahead and get behind him. Wiggle, wiggle, shake. Little wiggle will do you good. Um, let's go get this freaking. Uh, God dang it, I'm already over here. I really don't want to be over here though. Let us get these guys gone really quickly. And no, I went for the closer one when I really don't want to. Good thing he just decided to keep going in a circle. Makes it easier for me. Yay, thank you, sir. May I have another? Cool. Well, that escalated quickly, so that's not what I wanted at all. Let's go ahead and get a TU-10. Let's see how well we do against the butt of a TU-10, shall we? All right, let's not. Let's just act like we will. Um, cool. They've got that. Let's let them keep that, because you know what? I don't need air supremacy going on. It's not... Um, it's not ideal. And pretty darn quickly into the game and we're at 3400. We'll take that bullet magnet down there and the ground pounding machine. Come on guys, really? I'm trying to make a video here. Can you leave something for me? SU-9 seems to have lost all his energy. Some situations where I'm like, no, I need it. No. Oh, I'm out of, uh, out of boost, huh? Uh, I don't really think there's any point in me going for a RB-17. We'll get Mr. Uh, Spanish Blue over here. And up, up, and away, yeah. Dang it, people taking my kills. I need to get the kills. Oh, there's a bomber way down here? Cool. Now this these guns, as all 30s are, are very good at taking out bombers, very good at taking out um, ground attack aircraft. The problem that you'll run into with those types of planes is, well, you're in a light fighter, right? So um, you don't have all the hit points in the world anyway. You're not a heavy fighter, it's really the heavy fighter's job, but 
Um, if you've got a few seconds and you just need a little bit to, to knock somebody off, you can definitely get behind somebody and um, you know ruin a ground attack or a bomber's day. Let's go ahead and get back down here. Who are you, sir? Grigory? Grigori? Oh, thank you. Let's see about Hans here. Is it Hans Landa? Or Hans Solo? Two completely different people, right? Although, arguably, um, you know, besides one being a Nazi, I'm not sure I would mind uh, either of them being on my team. Damn you, defense aircraft. Really, that was my fault for overheating the guns too quickly. Oh, no. Air brakes. Oh, I'm hanging, dude. Yowzers. Alright. Let's see if we can get our engine cooling on here to stick with this 262. Let our guns cool down a little bit. Oh, we've uh, knocked out his engine so we can let off the boost. Yes, sir. You got an Akamatsu. That's all well and good. Ah, dang it. Super quick game. I've had quite a few of these super quick games. Um, and I think it's just because this plane kind of does a little bit of everything. Let's head on back. Alright, so personal points wise, uh, not the best game, right? Um, but I might actually use this as my posted video. Um, it's actually the worst of the personal points of videos that, um, that I've recorded. But I liked this one because it proved the balance of this particular plane. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I got a McCampbell, I got a Nakamatsu, so it tells you it's it's relatively well balanced. Um, I was able to take down one of everything, um, you know, bomber and a ground pounder, yada yada yada. The thirties can do that, right? Anything that's got two thirties can do that. What I like about this plane is its airspeed. Uh, it maintains that airspeed pretty well, and it's got that maneuverability. It's just a, a step above. Um, I'm actually quite enjoying this plane, and yeah, it was, I'm glad that I've got it. If we compare this particular plane to some of the other um, tourney fighters that are out there, your actual pivot fighters, um, it's kind of in the in the middle. Um, I mean, the Yak-19 is going to be the, the most tourney, of course, by a long shot. Um, but you're right in line here with the key and with, um, you know, being in line with the key is not a bad thing. Um, granted, my maneuverability is a little bit higher on the key and it's a decent amount higher on the LA. But I've got my turn time at 9.2 seconds um, and my stall speed's pretty darn low. Something that um, I pay attention to because sometimes you really need to hit those brakes to get away from an enemy. Um, and so, yeah. I um, I really enjoy that about a plane, um, but if we're not we're going to disregard the yak because it's an anomaly, right? It's a whole second uh, lower maneuverability than basically anything else that's up here. Um, you're right in line uh, with the key 162, um, maybe a little bit off on that. So we're going to get rid of the yak 19 because it's not fair to um, compare. The attacker is considered a maneuverable plane. Um, it's you know it's on the upper threshold of that. Same with the FJ-1. They're both considered maneuverable planes. They're certainly more maneuverable than things like um, the ME-1092 and the F-6U, the FW, not the FW. I'm sorry, the TA-183. Um, so they're you know these are the more maneuverable of those planes. Uh, what I like about the LA-160 is um, you know, these guns, they're actually more consistent than, than other 30s at this level. Um, you've got just a little bit more distance on them. Um, 
yeah, just a little bit, but you can notice that difference. This is 2300 basically, this is 2100. Uh, they also do a lot more damage. So, you know, when these, when, when you, if you're used to 30s and you enjoy 30s, you're going to like the LA-160. The 30s on this um, tend to react, you know, how you expect 30s to react. You don't want to be trying to reach out to your maximum distance because you're just not going to hit. Uh, at the super close up distance, you're not going to hit just because everything's kind of going around a little bit wonky. The altitude performance, yeah, the optimum altitude, quote unquote, is it the 5300 that I was talking about? Um, but really, anywhere in the yellow, you still, I still feel pretty comfortable in this plane. Now, uh, granted, I have set it up um, a little bit uniquely, at least for me. I put um, the G-suit on this particular plane because I was noticing that it does tend to stay in the yellow and not bleed its speed too quickly. Um, and I actually um, am able to stay pretty maneuverable even uh, up in the yellow. But because of the, um, the good airspeed of this plane or its ability to, to boost, um, similar to the LA-9, but this retains its its speed so much better than the LA-9 did. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm enjoying this particular plane a little bit more. Uh, this engine is the same engine that you get on you know, the Yak-19. Um, and so since I went down the Yak line, I had this top engine right away. And uh, that certainly is helping, just having the top engine right away. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually having quite a bit of fun with it. It's been difficult to record a game for it. Um, I've had some 12,000 um, 12, personal point games, but really it was me going to a sector and just kind of pivoting. And yeah, everybody knows how to freaking do that. Um, but I, I got forced into pivoting because if I didn't own that particular sector, a comm center, whatever it might be, an air base, um, you know, it felt like we'd lose the battle. And I'm a glutton for, for those kind of games. Um, but this game, I think, was a little bit more well-rounded, right? I went... To, from a comm center to an airbase to a comm center and you can see the speed of this particular plane it's not like you know it's not the world's fastest plane but it's not slow by any means and it does allow you to get around to different sectors as needed um so yeah this is actually the, the worst quote unquote worst personal point game that i had but i think this particular game showed uh, no i know for a fact this game showed more of the capabilities of the la160 if the enemy team Basically, if we didn't steamroll the enemy team, um, you know, this game would have lasted longer, and I would have been able to get a really good amount of personal points. It was less than seven minutes, which, you know, I know some games are less than seven minutes, um, but the overall score—I mean, what was the enemy score? They didn't even break 200. Um, so, yeah, um, but was still able to. You know, what I like about this plane is it's got a little bit more balance to it. At tier 9, a lot of different things get a lot more speed, which is something that I was, uh, you, you can be frustrated with tier 8 planes that get stuck in tier 9 battles because you're like, man, everything else jumps up in speed. But this doesn't um, sacrifice maneuverability for that, um, for that speed. And I like it. I like the 230s. Uh, you're able to, to really kind of go after some lower, t lower level bombers. Um, I mean altitude level and you can take out ground pounders as well um, with force and so this plane is a lot of fun for me I'm not sure if it's a keeper yet I'll keep you posted on that but um, I feel like it is I'm really enjoying my games and um, as everybody knows to me for me to keep a plane it needs to be fun first and foremost um, and then next it needs to be either a good or be fun and so far this is fun and to me it seems good <laughs> Um, and I, yeah, so I'm enjoying myself. I could see where instead of a G suit, you would go with a um, sight. Sometimes the accuracy on these guns is a little bit um, frustrating. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll keep the G suit 100%, but it has come in handy, I think. <laughs> Considering a G suit doesn't have like a symbol that pops up and says your G suit's enabled, um, I think I'm getting a uh, good usage out of it since I'm be able to stay at pretty high um, airspeed. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that uh, that micro review of this particular plane. I have only had it um, a handful of days, what, since last Saturday? Um, so less than a week for sure. 
uh, but it's been a f really fun plane and I um, you know I'm, I'm encouraged by this plane I'm looking forward to the LA-15 for sure and I like unique planes like this so I, you know as I'm talking about it I'm quite certain I'll keep this plane actually to me the LA-160 is kind of like the F-94D in the fact that you go down this line and you're like why is this plane on this line like it doesn't fit the tier before it or the tier above it but I'm glad it's in the game um, you know, I know it's in LA, it's a Lovochkin, but it's not a same play style as the tiers below it or the tier after it, I believe. I'll find out. Um, but I like it. It's fun. It's like the, um, yeah, it's just one of those, and there's a handful of tier 9 planes who are like, well, where did this plane come from and why is it in the game? But I like it. F6U um, is a, an example of that. The TA183 is another example. It's unique. Um, to that line and then to that tier so um, yeah nothing unique about these I mean I guess this is unique for that line and just because it's a jet but UK you get something unique uh, you know the attacker is unique it's a perfect segue between the Spitfire 14 and Swift once you have all three you can go okay yeah I know exactly where the attacker fits in it kinda seems disjointed at first until you get the Swift and you realize the attacker is the perfect segue to the Swift, which is the Swift is the complete opposite of a Spitfire. So, um, yeah. So anyway, enough rambling. God knows I ramble too much, and I apologize. Thank you for putting up with my BS. Um, I hope you're having a great day. I know um, you know the feedback on my LA9 video was uh, pretty significant. Um, do you guys have the same take that I have on the LA160? Is this a plane that you enjoyed? Was it something, you enjoyed the LA-9 and you got this and you're like, what the flip, let me get the LA-15 so I can get rid of this piece of crap? Um, or were you like, yeah, it's, it's, out of, it's out of line for this tech tree, but I still enjoyed it um, as much as I liked the tier 8 and the tier 10 above it. How do you feel about the LA-160? Um, and yeah, I'm done. So <laughs> have a great night and I will catch you later.